respect and sympathy in memory of senior aircraftman Scott Stevenson. Well, Warrington's supporters urged to get behind the side tonight and really lift them by their coach, Steve Price. And they have won only one of the last eight in Super League, so maybe they do need a bit of lifting. Their form hasn't been great in the run-in, having... And the evidence is, is there because they were second in the table and looked pretty nailed on for second. And they had to be happy to settle for fourth in the end. So they've got to G up a bit, haven't they? Well, they've had the distraction of the Challenge Cup in and amongst all that run, but you have to put Warrington as favourites in this match. Castleford without a host of forwards. You forget, don't you? Junior Moores hasn't played for some time, so he'll have it all to do, Castleford Tigers. Well, Jordan Rankin kicks us off at the Hallowell Jones Stadium. It's a surprisingly warm evening after a surprisingly warm and sunny day in this part of the world. And it could get quite warm out there as well with what's at stake here because the winners survive in the playoffs for the loop of the loop of the... and that's how important it is having someone at the back who can catch the ball when it's dipping in front of them under pressure when you've got a Tigers defence in your face. Here's Bryson Goodwin, how he'd love to bow out with Warrington with a grand final appearance. Returning to an NRL career is the uh, wire centre. They're in their own half, just inside Warrington. There's three tackles gone. And here's Blake Austin. Austin, lovely short, sharp pass to Jack Hughes. Hughes to Jason Clark. Everyone expecting that ball to go out of the back. Hit that little lead run. A great play from Warren. And then it's Clark. It's uh, Blake Austin who puts the kick in. And James Clare comfortable underneath that one. Sometimes, his, sorry. Sorry, Bill. Sometimes it's not about the big player looking for those long shifts. If you've got someone pushing up really hard, hitting an aggressive line, just tip the ball. Now, these days, people are always expecting players to shift the ball and, and push the ball out the back. There's Grant Millington. Just on his own 40-meter line. Yeah. And the referee says there was a little nudge there. And he's tried to play that ball too quick, hasn't he, Grant Millington? He's been penalized. And a rare mistake from such a consistent performer from Casford Tigers. And I guess with Nathan Massey not being out there, somebody has to take the unselfish carry. Might fall on the shoulders of Chris Clarkson. As we see, he's trying to play the ball as quick as he can, Grant Millington, but he's not stood up. And the referee said he's knocked that ball on. Yeah, I think in years gone by, he would have probably been penalised for not standing up to play the ball. But uh, the interpretation now is that uh, you've got to get up and... Uh, Play on your feet of the way, it goes the other way. Austin's pass finds Toby King on the charge. And Warrington get a penalty. Jake, that's you, push it. Bill, that's the second time that's that they've gone to the right hand side. And they've hit that lead runner. Coming back against the grain, looking for that weak shoulder. So it's all in here now. Will they go for two points? Think yes, they will. He's got the biggest job tonight, Oliver Holmes. Containing Blake Austin. 
really controlling what he does. We've seen like Austin, he seems up for this game. He's got heavily involvement early on, passing, kicking the ball, causing trouble on that far side of the field. It's what Oliver Halls needs to really build a wall around Blair Costin, nullify that threat. Because basically, without Darrell Clark, Blair Costin, the only two major things that I think they need to worry about. The boot is Stefan Ratchford. Might be a concern as well, because he's been in good kicking form this season. 82 goals to his name. And this is an opportunity for Ratchford to put first points on the board in this playoff face-off. Holmes conceding the penalty. And Warrington looking pretty hot in the opening minutes of this game. Good travelling support from the Casper Tigers at that end of the field, but they're unable to, they are able to put Ratchford off. He's missed with that one. I know they've missed the first two points, but you picked it up, and we all sense it watching this game. Warrington are very, very sharp. When you watch last week's game against the Leeds Rhinos, they look tired, they looked a tired outfit. Warrington Wolves. We just said Barry's first set, they've got a lot of the big players are out of form, aren't they? Not playing anyone near to the potential that they demonstrated in the first half of the season and that goal kick, well, it's just one example I think the angle there might be a bit, bit distracting yeah. well, it's got to go inside the post if it goes over the top, it's as if it hits it so it will be uh, fast as no goal as it was then so Ratchford misses with the first opportunity Cooper launching himself back towards the Casavid Tigers defence, oh. what intent well, that's how you carry the ball back, isn't it? It was a great drop out, and then Cooper caught down near to his own line, just took the ball under his wing and run as hard as he can. Here's Chris Hill. Chris Hill quickly on to Jason Clark. And that was a play to get at Paul McShane. Kevin Brown, our studio guest, said he thought they might flood the middle and give him a hard night. Paul McShane, he'll have a hefty workload in defence tonight. Jack Hughes plays the ball. Daryl Clark, once of the Casper Tigers, of course. Clark made the dream team in his Casper days. He's made the dream team in his Warrington days as well. Rankin is underneath that kick. Does well there, and they were offside. The Warrington chasers. Well, there's some urgency in that kick, yes, but you've got to make sure that you're behind the kick and you can see just on the middle of your screen just behind Chris Hill the man who's the first to Jordan rank him is penalised yes and Clark well you've got to look at what works for you as well in the league things haven't worked for the Wolves and Steve Price but I'm sure that they'll look to build on that and for this Casford side well they've got to throw everything at Warrington they're always best when they're unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do. Play off the back of some strong go forward. Well, here's Clarkson. Casper looking to complete a set for the first time tonight. And they're heading towards that. Darrell Powell looking on anxiously. And Millington stutter from the front oh, rower and you're right there's a bit of a mystery on who's playing where you can see Matautia getting his hands on the ball in the middle of the field he wears number one I don't know whether he's reverted back to fullback but it's just to keep everyone guessing well here is Matautia little kick from him <laughs> what a take from Patton right into the bread basket and Patton clutched it well good reaction under pressure wasn't he defending his line then had to deal with the kick Stefan Ratchford now look talk about the speed for Warrington Look at this, goes straight into him, he reacts. And Warrington all of a sudden are on a roll. It's Goodwin. Warrington fans finding their voices up to the halfway line with Mike Cooper. Wait, Chris, wait. Just into the Casper Tigers territory. Here is Patton back in the side tonight. Big tackle on Ben Curry. With Patton, sweeping pass to Austin. Austin gets the kick up and away. It's a good one. It's a terrific kick. 
and it ricochets kindly off Callum Turner. Came to the rescue then, didn't he, Chase Blurt? The youngster under pressure, but facing his own try line, the ball goes behind him, so that's play on. Phew, that was uh, sighs great. of relief for the Castleford Tigers. It's a great offload, Bill, I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> Could have gone anywhere that it ended up in the hands of Chase Blair. Here is Daniel Smith making his playoff debut. In fact, Daniel Smith and then Jake Truman. His kicking game so important to the Castleford Tigers side. It's a good deep kick pushing Charnley back towards his own line. Now he'll bring it back, Charnley. Well, he has got some playoff experience, hasn't he, Josh Charnley? He'll be one of the ones who knows how to navigate his way through. This player to make sure that your teammates around you are nice and composed and calm. Making his 250th career appearance tonight, Josh Charnley. Goodwin gets the pass away to Ratchford. Matautia. He looks hungry for work, Stefan Ratchford. I think that's the first time he's got the ball, but he's following ball carries everywhere. Clark Sorry, to Clark. mistake. Daryl Clark's pass. Dropped by Jason Clark. So Castleford Tigers have it back. Here is Liam Watts. Chris Hill there to meet him. The knock-on. Allowing the Castleford Tigers to maybe put a bit of pressure on this Warrington defence for the first time tonight. 20 metres out. Rankin moves to this side of the field. But then it's to Millington. Back into the middle of the park. Straightening up. Bounces off the first challenge. Cooper and Hill come back. He's lost that ball. He's knocked it on our second of the night for Graham Millington. Yeah, that's the second time. You're right, Bill. In the opening 10 minutes, the man who played from the bench in the 2017 Grand Final forecast. Really good player. Made a couple of mistakes early on for Daryl Powell. And the only positive forecast for this were they making the mistakes. Yeah, they'd like a couple more goals at Warrington's line, but it's what's their attitude like to defend as well in this next set. So that is a let off for Warrington. Because Castleford Tigers have got themselves into a good position there. Here is Patton. Clark. And if, if Castleford can spend a lot of time down near Warrington's line, they've got Two running halfbacks. Peter Matauch is not in the centre. He's in the halfbacks tonight, definitely, along with Jake Truman. Those two players will cause the big fella's problem as this game goes on. Cooper to Hill. Hill, good leg strength from the Warrington captain. Daryl Clark. Jack Hughes now. Chris Clarkson there to meet him. Jake Truman in there as well to make the tackle. Daryl Clark picks up and sees that there's an opportunity to make some progress. That's the fifth tackle, though, only over their own 40. And it's with Blake Austin, just steps outside that 40, launches the kick down the field. It uh, sits up, Rankin was waiting for it to arrive, it didn't. Yeah, he was waiting for it, you're right. He's got to attack that ball, the ball was high enough for Rankin to position himself underneath it. Don't just sit back and wait for the ball to come towards you or take a risky bounce. And now look, again, yardage play, making mistake. It's the same mistake as they made before when Grant Millington was trying to get up and play the ball. And you can see Liam Watts turn it round to his team and say, look, lads, we've got to make sure that we play this ball correctly. You can't make mistakes like that. We have seen those penalties go either way. And just to emphasise the point, about where Warrington are playing this game. Every single man in that pack there, all six members of that forward pack has done at least 10 tackles. So Warrington are trying to take some gas away from the big men in Castleford's shirt. Surely the, there was, the, the Castleford player was impeded there. The interpretation is now is you must be stable when you're playing the ball. The referee's ruled there that he's put the ball down before he's been released and he's got to make sure he's released before he stands up. The, the, the man playing the ball must be stable. Ratchford was uprooted there. Now here's Cooper. So another cast of a Tigers error. And there's been plenty of those in the first 13 minutes or so. And that latest one could prove costly. Because here is Patton. Patton, Goodwin. Goodwin, the ball to Lynham. Stepping in field. Scoop from Goodwin and Goodwin. 
Lineham is in there as well, trying to drive him over, but... He's in the wrong he's rugby there, isn't he? Rugby he's, union move. There. That's where he started his career. Curry, here is uh, Patton. Patton. Austin kicks for the corner. Turner is underneath it. The ball is batted down to Ratchford. Ratchford trying to weave his way through. That's the fifth tackle. Hughes. So which sort of kick will Austin come up this time? Again, crossfield. Minikin climbs superbly for it. Well, did a decent job. Did he jump from in the in goal earlier and then get out of the field of play? Well, the referee says no, he didn't. Ooh. It was a penalty there. Chris Hill leading the defensive line up. Oh, he's a high he, shot. He's up hard and he's up with some intent, is Chris Hill. Look at the way that they are finishing their sets. You know, that last minute of play looked like Warrington in the chance for the semi-final. I think before a try they scored against Hull. They rushed into the defence. Hull came up with a mistake in that corner of the field and they squeezed it at the corner. It's clear that the Wolves' strategy is about kick and chase and put their opponents under pressure. We've had 15 minutes now. Contrast and compare the way that both teams are handing the ball over. When Warrington are kicking it or getting to the back end of the sets, Casper Tigers are defending for their lives. It's the opposite when the Tigers are getting to the back end of their tackles. Here is uh, Liam Watts now, over the halfway line. Jack Hughes making the tackle. Clarkson drifting across the field, finds Millington. Here is Minikin, but Bryson Goodwin all over him. Daniel Smith now. Jason Clark with the tackle on him. That is the fifth tackle. And it's Matautia who'll lift this kick towards Lynham's wing. It's batted down and it's picked up by Patton, who was next on the scene. Here is Tom Lynham. Well, Cass have just got to keep with the pace of which Warrington are trying to play the ball. Look at that. Quick play the ball. Markers aren't set. They're going backwards. No real speed of defensive line then to try and take the momentum away from Warrington. Toby King plays the ball. Austin looking for a 40-20. He's given that a good thump, but it hasn't got the legs. And it's Rankin back there to gather the ball. Well, kicks early. Bell kicks on the third play. Spots that the wingers up. So it goes for the space, unfortunately, for him and his teammates. He doesn't come off. And that's great work from Charnley. He batted the ball out of the grass for the Tigers player. And Warrington have it back. The 40-20 didn't pay off, but they've still got possession. Well, that's the next best thing, isn't it? Hunt the mistake. Just Charnley did that. Jake Truman was the man who had his pocket picked. And here is Cooper almost through. And the referee says that one was forwards. They're going for that lead runner, hitting the short runner. We saw the last time that they went down the left, Greg Minikin took the wrong option, come in. Look at him, he's telling lies. Donald Clark with his eyes, he hits Mike Cooper again, who does a decent job just getting through the defensive line. Unfortunately, the time of that run needs to be better. But the disruption will come around. The quickness and the speed of that play of the ball, you look up, you play what's in front of you. Where's the defensive line? The tight three defenders either side of the rook. They're the pillar in defence that really set you up out wide. So neither side really clicking in terms of attack. Tentative start to this playoff tie. The losers, remember, go out to the end of their season. The winners survive to fight another day. More playoff action to come on Friday night. We'll see the Wigan Warriors against the Salford Red Devils tomorrow at 7 o'clock on Sky Sports Arena for that qualifier. Here is Rankin. Rankin bursting through. Curry is chasing him back. Keeping calm, Ben Curry. And it's Ratchford who makes the tackle. Here is Matautia now. Truman. Truman floats a long ball out wide to chase Blair. Blair, who's broken his try-scoring duck, suddenly scenting more whitewash glory. A little kick ahead from Truman. Warrington slow to react, and it's Curry who gets there in the end. 
And there's a trip there, I think, says Chris Kendall, the referee. What an athlete he is, Ben Curry. He's just made that break. Oh, sorry, he's just chased that break down, made a great decision to allow Stefan Ratchford to make the tackle while he was covering the supporting player. Finds himself in the right spot, and Liam Watts yet leaves his leg where it shouldn't be and gifts Warrington Wolves. What's that, 50 metres? It's a heavy price paid by Casa Tigers and Liam Watts for that reaction where he just stuck his boot out. And immediately the tables are turned. Here is Chris Hill now. Watts trying to atone, making the tackle. Now Cooper, Cooper's short pass, gets it away on it. Ricochets into the hands of Paul McShane. It was uh, Jason Clark who couldn't keep a hold of it. Well, Paul Machin, and he thought there should have been a penalty. You can tell by the way he's, how slow he's playing the ball. And Peter Mataltia wasn't wasting any time. Look at that. Good strip from him. Good awareness to catch the ball as well. That ball hits the ground. It's a knock on. It's another set of six for Warrington. Good work from Rankin. It was Mataltia with the original run. Rankin then. And now Ollie Holmes. This is only his 14th appearance of the season, Holmes. He's had his injury problems. Here is Watts. Puff with the cheeks from Watts to Smith to McShane to Matautia now. Matautia bounces off Curry. Three tackles gone. McShane. Here is Watts. Jason Clark with the tackle. McShane. Truman. Kicks into the corner, Charnley underneath it, kept his eye on the ball despite the pressure coming in from Chase Blair. And that's the sort of space that Jake Truman will love. No pressure on him, he manages to get the kick away where he wants to, drops it on the head of Josh Charlie, and all of a sudden they're under pressure then for the first couple of tackles in the set. There was a lot of space just behind that line, he chose to go to the corner and put a bit of pressure on Josh Charlie. maybe he'll have another look at that, that for me was Casper Tigers best set, they've had just over 20 minutes now despite a long time defending, a couple of interchanges now from either side, but what a fast pace we've had Austin kicking from deep in his own half and it's fielded by James Clare. Well, the Wolves need a boost, and maybe they brought it with a super sub, Joel Philbin. Of all the players who've started as subs this year, he's arguably the most noticeable. He's created the greatest impact when he's come on the field, both his attack and defence. He scored that fantastic try in the cup final at Wembley. And the Wolves here now, we've probably been outplayed in rugby terms. Here goes Clare. James Clare on the Casava Tigers' right edge. Patton with the tackle what a nice ball from Grant Millington though to set that the winger up on the right hand side Watts over to the other side of the field then Holmes straightens up Jason Clark with the tackle here's McShane now Chris Clarkson Clarkson with Daniel Smith juggling with that ball the former Huddersfield Giant he's 10 metres out that's the fifth tackle it's with McShane, Matautia now, little grubber kick from Matautia and it's batted over the dead ball line by Stefan Ratchford for the first goal line dropout of the night. Well, Darryl Parr, the second. Darryl Parr said at the beginning of the game that they've got to make sure that they improve the kicking game to get close to the line. If you don't score a try, the next best thing is to come up with a, another set of six. They do that, they pressure the fullback Stefan Ratchford, who himself is desperate to get to Old Trafford and win. Been involved in four grand finals, Warrington lost them all. It is the first goal line dropout. That's a satisfactory for the Casper Tigers, really, in the first 22 minutes here. Andrew Henderson behind the posts there, urging the team on as Blake Austin gets the kick away. And here is Watts, fed by Turner. There to meet him, Cooper and Daryl Clark. Chris Clarkson now. Cooper once more leading the tacklers for the Warrington Wolves. Watts. Here is Daniel Smith. Edging their way forward are the Casper Tigers. Three tackles gone. Watts. Matautia. Little run around with Millington. Lovely ball finds Claire, but Claire, faced by Goodwin and Lydum, is driven back. Warrington holding firm, four tackles gone, 
Metautia. Here is Millington. A little shimmy from the front rower. That's the fifth tackle. And it's McShane's with the pass. McShane, the run around. Still going. They've got the numbers. Oh, they couldn't find the pass. They had the numbers out wide. The ball's been batted down. Charlie almost was clear. And it was a good job. Chase Blair made the tackle. Well, good pressure from defence, wasn't it, from Warrington? Pull a little turn up plays from Cass, looking to strip them. And they did have the numbers on the left hand side. If Ollie Holmes got a, a nice clean pass away to Jordan Rankin, Cass could score the first point in this game. Do you know, it was great defence. He realised and recognised he was outnumbered, Josh Charlie. He had to shut that player down. Wonderful player from the wing. He had two or three players outside him, and they were in the Cass Tigers. So that's the first real opportunity maybe the Castle of Tigers have had in the opening 24 minutes of this game. That's the fifth tackle for Warrington. And Patton just drills it into the sidelines. And I think that's a recognition of the, the place that they're in in terms of their energy. They've been under pressure from Castle of Tigers. Two or three sets. That goal line dropout and Deck Patton steps up, nudges it over the sideline and just gives his pack of forwards a bit of a breather. Turn up to McShane, who has options, and there you see it, three players, one of them, big chase Blair. But good defence from Warrington and good defence from Josh Charley. Twice a grand final winner, Josh Charley. Hoping that with Warrington he can make it a hat-trick, but they're going to have to do it from fourth in the table. <laughs> just onto the field, the big bulldogs of Ben Murdoch, Masilla. So now that Casper have got to contend with him and Joe Philbin, the impact that they bring, not only when they're carrying the ball, but also in defence. Chase Blair plays the ball. Smith. Once more with the challenge. Here is Clarkson. You'd imagine, Bill, as well, at this cast side, some of the bigger players are going to have to do bigger minutes. The bench, they've got, they've got a hooker, they've got a halfback. They've got a, another hooker stroke, 13, and one middleman in Matt Cup. Great kick from McShane into the corner. Charnley pinned. Callum Turner it was. Oh, did he, he almost forced him back over that try line, but it was Callum Turner racing for his life. And Josh Charnley just does enough. Oh, oh that's a excellent work. work. Brilliant. Toby King driven over his own try line by the Casavet Tigers defenders. Dan Smith is there. Liam Watts is there, look at that. Toby King running laterally, he's met by three defenders. And they usher him over that try line and another goal line dropout. The design is probably the most important thing in defence. Obviously you need some technique and you need some teamwork. But with a commitment like that, they're giving themselves a chance. Barry said before the game, they are the clear underdogs in this challenge. But the Wolves, the longer the game's on, the more the pressure on the home team. More the anxiety, really. They're expected to win. I'll tell you what, it's been a massive effort early on from Daniel Smith, and he's just been replaced. I think Adam Milner is the man who's come on, and Daniel Smith has earned a break. I think it's been a real good sign in him, hasn't he? Released by Huddersfield. Darrell Powell's given him the chance. He certainly led from the front all the games that we've seen on Sky Sports. He's done a decent job. He's a flair player. He's got some good tricks and some good offloads. He's playing a different role for Cassie. He had to play a different role this evening with no nace and Massey. He gets those late tackles, lands on his front, Massey, and gives his kickers a quick play of the ball. Well, Kasavid Tigers on the back of that goal line dropout are threatening again. Can they make it work this time? Rankin trying to weave his way through, very nearly does so. Daryl Clark down low. Ben Murdoch, Masilla finishing off. Here is Clarkson now. Clarkson, he'll take it close. That's the fifth tackle. Right next to those post pads. McShane just surveying the opposition territory. Puts a little kick in. Oh, and it could be a try. The referee, Chris Kendall, is going to go to the video ref. If it wasn't a try, it could conceivably have been a penalty try. There was obstruction there. It was Milner with possibly only his second touch of the game. Big player, isn't he, Adam Milner? Missed last week against Wigan. And that's the intelligence that you get from Paul McShane, the rugby IQ to get out from dummy half, he has a little look up, nothing really up, they've got decent attacking shape on the right hand side, the man who is pushing up and giving himself a chance and an opportunity is Adam Milner.
gets rid of Ben Curry. He gets around him. And I think he grounds the ball. Look, he's under Fights some pressure. Off, doesn't it? Fights he's under off. some pressure and still manages to concentrate. Gets hold of that ball and grounds it. I think if, if, even if he doesn't ground it here, he does ground it in my opinion. But if he doesn't ground it, it'll, it'll be a penalty try here, I would have thought. There's clear obstruction on the way through. But the fact that he's grounded the ball, the try will be awarded anyway. Ben Thaler is the video ref at the Hallowell Jones Stadium tonight. Have we got the first try of the night from Adam Milner, his third of the season? We have. Now, look at this. Chris Clarkson, who I said would have to be unselfish, finishes near the post. He does get dished up and manhandled by three defenders, but that doesn't matter. It lets Paul McShane see between the H's. That's where he puts the kick. That's where defenders can't defend because that big post pad is there. Lovely skill, great determination, and the first try to the underdog. He's just really quick to react, isn't he, Paul McShane? Have a look, look at Jack Hughes' hips, gets it all wrong. Peter Matauti has got the goal kicking duties. For the first opportunity for the Casper Tigers, he's on target. Adam Milner with the try. Paul McShane makes his mind up here because Jack Hughes faces in. He turns his hips in, he knows that he can't recover. And then as soon as that space is there, he kicks the ball for Milner, who does a decent job to beat Curry for the grounding. He's done well there, Adam Milner, to get through and score that. The difficulty with the kick is first again in between the two defenders and then not kicking the ball too hard. Be delighted. I think they've worked on this hard in the last week. Obviously, they're working it all season. But last week at Wigan, they were disappointing with some of the short attacking kicks. That one was perfect. Adam Milner back in the side tonight, actually, having missed that defeat at Wigan. Came down with a bug on the eve of the game. Back in action tonight. And getting the scoreboard moving. Warrington have had just the one chance. Ratchford missing with a penalty kick and now his kicking tee is playing up finally got it lined up as he likes so Casavid Tigers have had really you've got to say in the uh, coming up to half an hour the better of happenings so far I would say the opening quarter belonged to Warrington Wolves the Dictated the pace and the tempo, but then from that point on, Castleford Tigers had a bit of field position, tested and challenges, tested and challenged the defenders, and they obviously got that first try and they've worked hard to get it. Milner and Hughes wrestling on the ground. Here is Watts now. Watts. The only Castleford Tigers player to be named in the Dream Team. It's a deep kick, and Ratchford looking at it, bobbling all the way over the dead ball line, which it does in the end. Of course, it's playoff time in the NRL as well, and tomorrow morning at 10.45 on Sky Sports Arena, it's South Sydney against Manly. And on Saturday, 10.45, Sky Sports action, Melbourne Storm against Parramatta. And one of those sides will go out. Here is Joe Philbin. Just signed a two-year contract extension, Philbin. Reward for some really big efforts. Mike Cooper. Well, he's been excellent, hasn't he? One of the standout performers this year. Quality player. Daryl Clark. Jack Hughes now. Here is Blake Austin. Austin has slipped the net. Austin has slipped the net, and it needed a good tackle from Jordan Rankin to stop his progress and Austin is hurt problem straight away with him wasn't it well he gets through the line Blake Austin been outstanding missed four games but back the last two look at this tries to use his footwork his speed to try and get around Jordan Rankin he couldn't fox him hard to see where he's picked that injury up isn't it simply landed on his lower leg and in the time that he's been away, defenders have forgot that. He loves a dummy, he loves a show and go. He did all he could to find the, the, the fullback when he made that break. Pretty innocuous tackle from yeah. Jordan Rankin. He's back on his feet, is Blake Austin anyway. And Warrington looking to hit back. Curry. 
And the referee says there's a forward pass in the build-up to that. Deck Patton cannot believe that. Well, they have had enough field position, Warrington, in this game. And again, look at him telling lies with his eyes. He's got Stefan Ratchford out the back. But they are hitting the lead runners. They are hitting the support runners. Whether it be over here on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, I think they, what they're thinking is, look, when we play a cast and we've got them going sideways defensively, nine times out of ten, they jam in, they try and wedge in and may take the wrong option. That's why they hit that lead runner. It will come out the back at some point for Warrington, won't it? They'll do a number in terms of the thought process of Castleford Tigers defenders. They'll think about front runner, front runner, front door, short pass, and then before you know it, you'll go out the back and there'll be a player in space. It's the Castleford Tigers in possession at the moment. And it's with James Clare, their top try scorer this season. Here is Watts, charging run from him, but Philbin makes the tackle. And then there's a penalty. And it caused a bit of disruption, doesn't it? The size of, of Liam Watts, the confidence that he's, he's got and he's had all year. If he calls for the ball, he gets it. Because whether it's a one-up carry or whether he's going to tip the ball on, he plays like a half-back sometimes. He's big, aggressive in defence and also carrying the ball. And, and Deck Patton just couldn't control him then. Tried to, was penalised for it. Warrington yielding territory once more. Here is Matt Cook. Into the action off the bench, Matt Cook back in the side tonight, having missed last week. Here is Milner, Milner, try scorer, the only try of the night then. Ten metres out, Castleford pressing again, the side that finished fifth in the table. It's with Chase Blair, but Blair having to resist the Warrington tacklers, he can't do that. Look at Andrew Henderson, almost involved, the Warrington assistant coach. Well, he wasn't like that when he played, Andrew Henderson, didn't like tackling. Well, look, when you've got, he doing? When you've he's got, getting high fives as well, get out! <laughs> when you've got the size, a winger the size of Josh Charlie, just look at him, Chase Blur is a big, powerful man. But he's manhandled over the sideline. <laughs> Have a little look at this. Charlie, King, Stefan Ratchford pushing. It took a walk. He looked like a jockey then, didn't he? Three Whipping him. Endo, move out of the way. <laughs> Down. He's still on the field. He's only just leaving now. Not gone far either. So that was good defence from Warrington. Chase Blair really was uh, backed into a corner there. Well, they need to see though. It's some good attack, isn't it, before half time? They've made some good strong carries. Mike Cooper, one or two others, run really hard with the ball, but there hasn't been much team play really has to put the player in the hole. Defence from Casper has been good. Technical look there, holding the man, controlling him. Warrington are a very good team offloading the ball. We haven't seen many tonight because of the quality of the tackles made by the Tigers. Big roar from the Warrington fans because Benny Westwood is on the field. This could be farewell for the 38-year-old. There he is on the shoulder of Daryl Clark, but it's Clark with the run. That's a penalty. And that's because everybody's zoned in on Benny Westwood thinking he's getting his first carry and the smart player that Daryl Clark is. God, we've got two good number nines to look at here. Two contrasting ways of playing the game, but both smart players, intelligent competitors. It's Toby King now. So Cam Warrington with half-time approaching. Gets their attack working. Here is Westwood then. Enthusiastic as ever. Peter Pan of the game. <laughs> Little short pass from Hughes to Philbin. Hughes directing operations, but it's Darrell Clark with the pass to Patton. Patton to Murdoch Masilla and the Castleford Tigers defence needing to be strong here. Murdoch Masilla is told to get to his feet by the referee. Patton spins the ball out. It's with Austin to Hughes. Hughes takes him on in the middle. Watts. Millington and McShane do the tackling. Daryl Clark now goes to the short side. Patton, little kick over the top. Nice one it is. Picked up by Charnley. And it's six to go, says the referee. There is a Casavet Tigers hand in there. There's more pressure coming on them now. It's with Westwood. Oh, how they would love Ben Westwood to sign off here with a try. McShane with the tackle. 
Here is Austin now. Austin, little dummy, but they saw that one coming. And it was Watts with the tackle, and Austin is struggling again. Blake Austin really is going through the pain barrier tonight. He's with Westwood now, hand in the face of Milner, but Milner hangs on for dear life. And here is Daryl Clark. Clark, a little step, and Daryl Clark is over. Has he got that one down? The referee can't see. I don't think he has. I think there's boots, legs, arms, everything in the way. What does this referee see? I have a try. Chris Kendall reckons it is a try, that Daryl Clark has got that ball down for his eighth try of the season under those Castleford posts. And that will be infuriating for Daryl Powell to see their old boy pull that trick on him. Let's have a look here. Plenty of bodies around. Mm. Do you know what? I don't think he gets the ball no. now. I didn't uh, uh, live play. I, I haven't seen anything to convince me otherwise what does this angle what is this angle telling us I think it's Adam Milner's boots Barry that, that stop him from grounding the ball he was a firm favourite back in 2014 wasn't he he was named young player of the year he was man of steel you can't what? tell Lord Penny from that angle no. it's impossible no. to tell the referee's given a try what can you do we, we have an instinct that it hasn't gone on the ground and, and the other worry for Warrington is Blake Costin is heavily limping. I'd be surprised if he hasn't got some form of dead leg at the top of his knee, either from that break or that big challenge from Watts. But what's the decision on the try? Ed Thaler is the video ref, having a super zoom close-up. Look at this incident. That ball is on somebody's boot. Well, I think there's sufficient evidence there to over overturn this um, try decision on the field. But the point two the angles we've seen now. We've, well, we've seen two angles now where the ball is always up in virtually every shot. When you, you marry the two together, I think there's sufficient evidence there to overturn this. That, that ball looks pretty level to me on his on his boot. And again, normally there's the belly of the ball, then there's the point of the ball. Is it enough? Is it enough to overturn the decision from the ref? It's great defence from the Castleford Tigers if they have managed to deny Daryl Clark. And they have. Phil talked about desire before, and that's exactly what you want. Pretty frustrating first 40 minutes for Steve Price, but I'm sure that Daryl Powell will be really impressed with the way his side have handled Warrington, made Warrington make mistakes, and saved the try. Yeah, they've got to get through to half time. They've got just over four more minutes to contend with this wave of attack. Can they do it? That was a sort of defence that gets you to a grand final from the Casava Tigers right on their own try line. They lead as we approach half time. The ball's knocked on by Charnley and it's picked up. No advantage, knock on. And the referee brings them back for the knock on. And, knock and it'll on. be the turnover. Knock on by Warrington. The kick from Patton looking to get that man free, Josh Charnley. He can't take it. I think it's Toby King that knocks the ball forward. And the referee right on the mark to spot that. But it's not all over for Cass now. He's got to get through and up through this set of six. And it's that man, Liam Watts, who leads by example time after time. Watts, I think, out there for the duration of this first 40 minutes so far. Which is pretty typical of his season. Here is Chase Blair. Six NRL playoff appearances for the Casper Tigers signing. Here is Peter Montalgia. Millington now. Millington's pass dipping at the feet of James Clare. A bit ambitious that was. You'd back him. The majority of the times he's in that situation, you'd back him to make that pass. But there's a bit of fatigue, there's a bit of pressure. And Grant Millington, well, that's a shocker. But I, I love an underdog story, me. I turned up to this ground expecting Warrington to play well, post some points, and maybe if they won Warrington, win by a fairly hefty margin, but Castleford Tigers have turned up, and they're going to give it a really good crack. And one of the biggest threats to play against Black Austin, the way he's moving, you can't imagine he's going to feature in the second half, he's trying everything he can, the right knee heavily strapped, we'll just watch how he moves here, can't walk without pain. Ratchford can't get that pass, and frustration in the Warrington camp, Goodwin kicking the ball away, 
And if it is a dead leg, all three of us, maybe three out of four of us, Bill, sorry, you've told me off for saying that before, but we've all had dead legs, and the longer it goes on, if you sit down, it stiffens up, there isn't much movement in it, so he's got probably until half-time. I have had a dead leg. <laughs> have you? Yes. Let me tell you, that is not a dead leg. The way that it's strapped, though, it's a knee problem. Oh. He might have a dead leg at the top of his knee. Well, he's just, he is struggling, Blake Austin. You can just see him at the top of the picture there, just hobbling out of frame, and uh, that is not good news. You won't see him in the second half. If he gets through to the half-time, you will not see him in the but, second half. But they won the Challenge Cup, Cup without Blake Austin, so they don't need Blake Austin in the ranks to win big games. Here is Milner, Casava Tigers. Edging their way forward again. They should run at Blake Austin. They've got three players here in the middle. They have to go left. McShane is looking right at the moment. Now he spins the ball out left, and Turner is going to go. Drake Truman, rather, is going to go for one. Instead, the ball ricochets to Oliver Holmes. And, they got and the referees wipe the tackle count clean. That was a devious ploy, that was. Now here is Truman. Truman with a little step, and Jake Truman almost over. He lost the ball. They've got to get him off, Blake Austin. They've got to get him off, as brave and courageous as he is. He's a liability at the minute. Good attempt, isn't it? He just loses, again, under pressure. Well, Blake Austin, the word from the sidelines, from Fraser Dainton, who's been getting some uh, news from the Warrington camp, is that it is a twisted right knee, and that they think he should be able to come back on in the second half, or continue in the second half. Liam Watts... Medial lead, England. Yeah, it looks like... I'll be very, very surprised if he can play in the second half. Watts with the, the weight on his knee. Josh on the mark! Wait, wait. He's not looking good, is the mercurial... Blake Austin. So the mechanics of that injury, if it is a medial ligament injury, it will mean that it's unstable and painful. If they can stabilise it with strapping, get rid of the pain during half-time when they've got 10 or 15 minutes with him, we'll wait and see, he's integral, there's no doubt about that. He's mercurial as well. He's both, but he's limping either way at the minute. Here's Patton, oh, lovely Good little pressure. kick from Patton, great footwork from Ratchford, and Rankin comes across to gather the ball. And the referee says, play on. The hooter is sounded, but Rankin is in possession. Rankin runs into Tom Lynham, and that'll be it for the first 40 minutes. Danny Orr up off the sideline to applaud his side for a really strong effort in the first 40 minutes. A bit of a shaky start as Warrington looked to make the most of home advantage in this playoff tie. The losers going out, but it's the Casava Tigers who've got stronger, I think, as that first 40 minutes has gone on. Some big performances, just the one try, Adam Milner just going out of the picture there, getting the only try of the first half. But it is a playoff. It is the season on the line for these two. This is what you expect, and there's more to come after the break. His side lead by six points to nil, but it is going to be a nail-biting second half. Season on the line, the losers go out, the winners go through to meet. The losers of Wigan against Salford play tomorrow night. Game you can see here on Sky Sports, of course. And here is Grant Millington. Casper Tigers have shown resilience. Reminds me, Terry, of the they lost, but only by four points to nil when they played St Helens a few weeks ago. Yeah, really, really determined. Really, really determined. Yeah, they were. They, they were strong in defence, and it showed that when they held up Warrington all under the uh, the sticks. And I just think they've got to make sure that they're disciplined. They've been finishing the set twelve. Warrington have been making mistakes when they've been in control at the ball. At the play, the ball, so I'm sure all the talk from Steve Price would have been, look, we've got to make sure we turn over on our terms. And Casaford from Dallapal, look, let's keep doing what we're doing. It appears, doesn't it, that... Oh, the kick oh, is charged, charged down. down! The kick is charged down, and Curry is first onto it, and gets the pass away to Murdoch Masilla. 
and immediately Warrington are on the offensive, trying to capitalise on that. And here is Ben Westwood, Kasava Tiger scrambling back into defence. Tremendous work by Ben Curry. I think he's the man with that half-backs role at the minute. Patton floats the ball out. Goodwin comes back in field, and Bryson Goodwin driving for the line and held up just, just short by Matt Cook and short, short. short. And they're bang in front of those posts. Here is Clark. Clark denied by the video ref in the first half. Patton pushed the brakes on. Jake Mamo is out there and Mamo tries to push his way over. Has Mamo got that ball down? He has! Jake Mamo! Right at the start of the second half. With Blake Austin off the field. The man they've sent on in his place has come up with the perfect start to the second half. It's Jake Mamo getting his ninth try of this Super League season. How did he get that ball down in the corner? Squirmed his way over. Well, both talked about this man in the first half, just how athletic he is, how hungry he is. Ben Curry, first to put pressure on. I mean, this is how you introduce yourself to the game. You've been given the chance of getting on the field. His first touch, he goes over the, the trial line. Jay Mamo, another one of those players, has been a, a real good, solid signing for the Warrington Wolves. Goes over, gets rid of Greg Minikin, and certainly, certainly gives them something now and some belief for these Warrington faithful to play off and cheer on. Jake Mamo, wow, what an introduction to the game. Making his playoff debut, the former Giants and Newcastle Knights man. That is some introduction, talk about a super sub. Stefan Ratchford looking to tie the scores up from out wide. He missed with his only other attempt at goal that very early penalty. Well, that kick charge down could be a pivotal moment in this game. Matautia maybe a, a, a little bit nonchalant in getting the ball away. And Curry pounced on him. Now then, Ratchford from the sidelines is on target. The scores are level within three minutes of the restart. Right, let's go down to the sidelines. Let's find out about this Blake Austin situation. Fraser Dainton is on duty tonight. Yeah, well, uh, Blake Austin not likely to come back into this game at all. You can see that he's got a real problem with that right knee. It looks like it's a ligament problem. You can see him having a, a half-time fitness test, but as, as things stand at the moment, it looks very, very unlikely that he'll play any other part in this game. Steve Price with a face like thunder as he came out of the dressing room uh, after half-time. He wants his players to stay patient, keep on the ground and play more. As for Daryl Powell... Very happy with the way things are. He wants them to keep going. He wants more accuracy in the passes, but more crucially, he wants them to finish their sets. And he said that the 10 minutes of the second half will be absolutely crucial. Thanks, Fraser. Well, this game has maybe been a slow burner. Well, one player that needed to inject some personal interest for the Warrington side was this Jake Mamo. You know, he sat on the bench last week at Leeds for 80 minutes, didn't get involved in the game. He's been given a chance here in his first involvement. He's got his side back level. Look, he's supporting ball carriers. He probably needed some fresh legs. He's provided it. Here's Philbin. Watts making the tackle. Big engine, Liam Watts. Patton. Under pressure, gets oh, a good wow. kick away and well fielded by young Callum Turner, just 20 years of age. It was a booming kick, wasn't it? Changing direction while it was in the air, but he did well. Never looked like dropping it. The intensity from the moment both teams got out of the changing rooms at half time, you could see a difference. I'm not surprised that Steve Price had a face like Thunder. He wouldn't have seen this script when he was setting off in his car for the game today. James Clare plays the ball. Here is McShane. A little stepping run from him. Truman. Truman delays the pass. And so gone. Holmes gets away from Charnley. Should have gone. Chase Blair looks at the heavens. 
He wanted that pass off his back rower. That's the fifth tackle, just inside the Warrington 40. Milner plays the ball. Truman gets the kick away. It's Jake Mamo underneath it. He is really lively out there. He's an attacking player, isn't he, with some speed as well. He's not the biggest, but so strong. You can see the, the ice on the knee. And that look says it all from Blake Austin. It will mean that Warrington, obviously, player for player, need to focus a little bit on the team and not perhaps on leaning on Austin Block. Blake, although he's a tremendous player. Philbin riding the challenges, ducking the challenges. They were coming in from all sides on him. Here is Daryl Clark. Clark weaving run, lovely run, almost got the pass away, couldn't do so. Fifth tackle, he was trying, trying desperately to get his support runner involved. The kick, deep and there'll be respite, because this has been a thunderous start to the second half. Six and a half minutes gone, it's hardly stopped. And all, all the play has been with Warrington. Casford gets seven tackles now. On the back of this, the ball going out. Behind the dead ball, and you think that Casford have really got to step up the tempo in the game, because at the minute it seems to be Warrington the ones that seem to be dictating this second half. Yeah, they've scored the first point. They look stronger, they look hungry, they're making decent metres when they're carrying the ball. Here's Milner, his try cancelled out then by that Warrington effort from Jake Mamo. Matt Cook. Played in the playoffs with the Bradford Bulls, Matt Cook. That just seems a distant memory, the Bulls in the playoffs in 2006 and 2007. Matautia, good run from him. And they can't get a hold of Peter Matautia. Oh, so elusive, not only elusive, but he's strong as well. Eventually, Clark and Ratchford do the tackling. Here is Matt Cook once more. Ten metres out, that's the fifth tackle, McShane. McShane's pass is with Rankin! John Rankin try out of nothing. Warrington caught nothing on their left side. And Jordan Rankin just put his foot to the floor and screamed in for his 10th try of the season. In his first playoff appearance, he's put the Casimir Tigers back in front. Both coaches talked about how they end sets before a ball was kicked or passed this evening. Now trace that try all the way back to deck pattern. He was in an acting half back, he kicked the ball over the back line, giving Castleford Tigers seven tackles. The setup play is smart, and you could see when that ball was being spread and passes were being made. The Warrington defenders, you can see deck pattern at first he runs in. Then he has to move out, and there's a little bit of shuffling, a little bit of pack, panic and reaction. And from that point on there, Tommy Lynham thinks I'll stick with my winger because he's coming, and that's a wonderful decision there from Jordan Rankin. That, that speed, that built. He's got some afterburners, hasn't he, Jordan Rankin? And, and Bryson Goodwin just has a little look up at Greg Minikin, who was the dummy runner. He checks him just for a second, and that's enough. That's all Jordan Rankin needs to get on the outside of him. They're not sure the goal kickers out there, the uh, Casper Tigers. It's Peter Matautia who's got the duties and has hit the targets. Great kick from the sidelines, equal to Ratchford's effort a moment ago. What a start to the second half this is. The Casper Tigers back in front. Well, this is the kick. Deck pattern there, so reliable from the boot. He kicks it long and hard. And with the bounce of the ball, it goes over that back line. Seven tackles, Castleford have to go. They have a look at the line, and the sideways motion of those defenders just means they're always going to be grabbing. And Jordan Rankin gets Castleford Trigers back in front on the scoreboard. Here is Grant Millington. There is Rankin, a versatile player he is. He's actually played the last eight games at fullback. Jamie Ellis demoted to the bench tonight for the Casper Tigers. Holmes. 
Brown with the, the run. Sorry, Phil. But Warrington's success early half in the season, I suppose, in that Charles Cup final was based on power. Big men in the middle, dominating their opponents, carrying the ball forward, making more metres. That hasn't been the case recently, it hasn't been the case tonight. That's when Chris Hill comes back on the field. That's the next big push here from this Warrington side. Matoti almost trapped to the last and kept it alive. He did, he almost found a gap, and then it's Minikin who drills the kick downfield, but Mamo is there, and Mamo builds up pace and then runs it back, but so runs into Milner. It's a decent defensive line, that as well, from Casper. And he picks up probably one of the strongest defenders, Jay Mamo. He runs straight out of Milner. There they go. Won a couple of players, the ball's Daryl Clark on the back of that. Tight defenders can't get set. Do you think they need to play more rugby than that? Running from dummy half, it's almost like a, a simple under sevens plan here to gain ground. They're doing it again here now, but they're going to have to do something to break through customers' defence when they get closer to the line. The crowd like that little sidestep from Ben Westwood, taking his side nearer Castle Tigers territory. Oh, the ball's gone forward. Zero. Zero. Referee says. That's Castleford's ball. And it's third ball because the passing accuracy of the opponents isn't good enough. This is the 30th Super League game they're playing this year and their attacking fluency has completely deserted them. Well, remember, they haven't had a great deal of fluency in recent weeks. Only one win in the last eight in Super League. And that, after they've won eight of the first nine in the season. And that's not the sort of form you want going into the playoffs, is it? You don't want those the wobbles in your head thinking, how do we win games where... We're obviously got 28 minutes to go in this, but we're six points behind. And Casford, we threw everything at them, but they're just riding the game. They're going forward. Another good carry here from Smith, but he's lost the ball. Slippery hands out there. It is a clammy evening. Unbelievable. We're in the, the middle of September, even heading towards late September, and it's hot and steamy out there. It's hot and steamy for sure because a season is on the line. The losers, of course, going out. Warrington with a challenge cup already in the trophy cabinet this year. But really desperate to get that first championship for some time. Now then, here they come with Patton. Patton launches a pass out wide and it's behind Lynham. And Lynham looks and says, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, Phil just said on the right-hand side, after 30 games, you, you need to be clinical. The body language from Steve Price says it all. You've got a lot of Warrington players pointing, you've got Deck Patton looking around, Tom Lynham throws his arms out saying, what's what's going on here? It's a poor pass from, from Deck Patton. It's not aimed at anybody, centre, goes up in front of his centre, behind his winger. You're right, says he's floating that pass into the space, he thinks somebody will take charge of it. It's a little bit too far in front of Bryson Goodwin, he's behind Tom Lynham, he goes the, across the face of another player, Warrington have had the edge on the Castle of the Tigers this season. They've won two of the three meetings with the Tigers. But this is the one now that counts. Cassell is on the field now for Warrington Wolves. And Deck Patton. You have to be better than that. He's the only recognised halfback. Oh, Clarkson felt that. It was Murdoch Mozilla. No, Bill, sometimes you, you've got to have vision. And Clarkson, well, I think he lacked that vision then. Why would you pick the biggest man on the field? Matautia gets the kick away. Mamo is underneath that one. Again, it, it's a good chase from Casford. Good signs. Ben Murdoch Masilla squared him up straight away, didn't he? Didn't miss him. Lynham gets the pass away. Good when it is who picks it up. Up to the 40 metre line, Bryson Goodwin. Line them once more. Edging their way upfield. Oh, and Tom Lynham's banging the ribs there. But look at that, he, does, he still doesn't want to let go of the ball. He wants to give the ball to somebody else. He picks up something somewhere. Whether he lands funny on the ball or. Sometimes that can happen. You land with the weight of yourself, the force of your run, and a couple of players on top takes the wind out of you. But impressively, he has hold of the ball. He, 
He's almost set. Get, keep hold of that for a minute while I catch my breath. Tom Lynham still catching his breath. You'll have a chance to catch your breath after this one, and then it's back into action with the qualifier between the Wigan Warriors and the Salford Red Devils. What a season Ian Watson's side have had. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock on Sky Sports Arena. Can they continue with that? Blake Austin dejected on the sidelines. His evening at an end. Dominant figure this season, but just at the time that Warrington won. And OK, they got over the line in the Challenge Cup final. But now they need him. He's been one of the standout figures all year, hasn't he, in, in Super League? He is. And he has entertained everybody that's watched, whether it be Sky Sports or whether you've turned up here. You see that he took on Liam Watts and Grant Millington. He lands on his knee, does Liam Watts. And that just seems to open up his medial ligament. And his season could be over if Warrington lose this game and the effect that he'll have if... Obviously, if Tom Lynham can't continue as well, he still looks struggling. He's saying to the physio and doctor, he's OK, Steve Price. Be a worried man. Well, he's not the only one with a knock, is uh, Tom Lynham and Blake Austin, because there's spare a thought for young Louis Ashton, who is a member of the Warrington Wolves ball crew tonight, who suffered knee and ligament damage. There he is. We think, we think, on the uh, on the sidelines. He's on crutches, he's got his leg in a, a case, and he plays for Latchford Giants under 13s. On Monday, he dislocated his knee and suffered lig ligament damage. So, speedy recovery, Louis. Let's hope Warrington can give him something to cheer about tonight. At the moment, they trail six points to 12. Tom Lynham is back in action. And Rankin has lost the ball. Penalty is offside. Penalty for Warrington Wolves, it was a high kick, challenged in the air, and it looked for a second like Jordan Rankin had got it covered. But when it goes up, they're chasing hard Warrington Wolves. And then when he drops the ball and it's picked up by his half-back partner, Jake Troom, and that's a penalty to Warrington. So, what an opportunity this is for the Warrington Wolves, and Chris Hill takes the first tilt at that Casava Tigers line. A short pass! And Cooper was steaming on to the ball, but standing in his path was the outstanding Daniel Smith. Clark sweeps the pass away to Patton. Here is Mamo. Mamo teasing the defence. Bryson Goodwin has to stretch out for that and then tries to find a gap. But Minikin makes the tackle. Mamo. Mamo across the field, looking for a gap. The crowd urging him to go forwards, but he just went sideways, Jake Mamo. Four tackles gone. Here is Hill, so Hill gets the pass away to Patton. Patton loses it, and that's the end of that attack, and that is great defence. You build in confidence. Tigers. You build in confidence. You know, when a team's throwing everything at you, you're on your line. And I think it's young Jake Truman. He sets his target, he wedges in, he knows that he's got to make that tackle on deck Patton. Otherwise, he's created a gap on the edge, and it's all about timing. And the young halfback, he got three tries. Go, was man of the match when he was on Sky against Hull FC. Again. Shows that yeah. he can also oh. defend as well as score yeah. tries and guide yeah. his team around. Well, they're going to have to do some plenty more defending of the Casper Tigers before they can think of Move, their next right involvement right in here. the playoffs. You might start thinking about a drop goal, I know there's a very long time to go and some teams don't like it because if you don't succeed you give the opposition seven tackles from a top 20, we've seen what that can do recently. But you don't see Warrington scoring 10 or 20 more points in this game, they haven't been scoring many in the last 10 games and you doubt in the next 20 minutes or so they're going to get on the line several times, so every single point matters and obviously the psychological difference of a seven point lead over a six one could be massive. Holmes plays the ball just inside his own half. Truman stretches for it. Here's Callum Turner now. Over the halfway line. That's the fifth tackle. And it's McShane who gets the kick in. It's a decent one into the corner, but Mamo is across there to cover. And plenty of enthusiasm from Jake Mamo since he's come on the field. Plus that try. King. Frustration growing among the, the Warrington supporters. They were 
jubilant when Mamo plus Ratchford's conversion brought the scores level, but that's quickly evaporated as Castleford have regained the lead. Now then, what can the wire come up with now? Curry, who runs into strong challenges from Matautia and Millington. 40 metres from their own line. Here is Chris Hill, and Hill... It's Daniel Smith with the tackle. That's the fifth. And Hughes onto Ratchford, and Ratchford kick into the corner. Rankin comes across, Warrington chasing in numbers. Well, fresh legs for, for Casper Jack to O'Neill onto the field for Darrell Powell. Plays at hooker. Like you said before, Bill, there's a number of these players that are going to be playing out of position, but everyone's got to put their hands up. And some of your teammates are injured or they need to take a breather. Liam Watts has left the field a couple of minutes ago. This is where it counts, isn't it? 20 minutes left, potentially your last 20 minutes of the season. The game is within your grasp. Are you prepared to dig in and give every last ounce of effort? James Clare, here is McShane. Jack O'Neill, the Cumbrian youngster, is on the field. Welcome, says Ben Murdoch Masilla. Matautia kicks for the sidelines and Lynham caught in two minds. Didn't know whether to go for that. Decided discretion would be the best option. Let it find touch. He wanted to leave that. He wanted that to find the sideline and everybody get that little bit of a break in such a high intense game even though it was a scrappy ugly kick he knew what he wanted as an outcome everybody's happy with that you can see both teams bit of communication couple of deep breaths and let's get back into it of course no Jesse Senny Lefeo for the Council of the Tigers tonight always an important figure for them but his sending off costing him a two-game ban sitting on the sidelines and Clark has lost that ball he's knocked it on says the referee Daryl Clark conceding that that was the fact there's no pretense or claim that it was ball steal he lost it pure and simple well, there's another classic example of White's best players just not playing well at the moment I'd arguably say over the course of the season Daryl Clark has been the best Warrington Wolf consistently but he's lost the ball here, and it's a massive invitation. He's starting the set inside Warrington's half. Let's go back down. This really gives him every incentive and every opportunity. Oh, again, again. Won't get many of these in the next 20 to put again. some points, Shot whether it be a single one, oh. four or six. This could be a turning point in the match. Into the final quarter of this game. Holmes, Murdoch, Masilla motors over to make the tackle and drives him towards the sidelines. He's defended well, hasn't it? Big Ben is on a mission. Two. Callum Turner now. He's been playing a lot of his rugby league for Featherstone Rovers in the championship this season as Callum Turner. Here is Daniel Smith. Rides the challenges. It was a, another big one from Murdoch Masilla, but Daniel Smith withstood it. Here is Matautia now. Run around. Rankin. The pass is batted down by Lynham, and it'll be Castle of the Tigers head and feed at the scrum. Well, they're just under pressure. A shake of the head from, from Daryl Powell. Maybe he's thinking that they should have a bit more depth out wide. You'd have to say, though, it's pretty good attacking play. We haven't seen anything like that from Warrington. Of course, he, he almost went for the interception. But there was players moving at pace. There was some deception. They created an overlap. Too many attackers and too few defenders. They couldn't find that final pass. Let's go, Patrick. Ten seconds. Wait, wait. Head and feet, then. To the Casper Tigers in striking range of the Warrington line. Move, Darryl! On the line, wait. Holmes wait. wrestling wait. to get to his feet. Here's Jax O'Neill, a hooker by Darryl. trade. Hold. Go to. McShane likewise. Watts is back on and Watts is going for it, but that ball has come away from him. How did it come away from him? That's what yeah. Chris Kendall, I think, wants to know. Have no try. No try. That looks pretty apparent. Yeah, well, he, his body language isn't good, Liam Watts. He's walking back. He goes for it, doesn't he? He's a, a big, big, powerful man. Now, well, Mike Cooper gets his body in front, along with Jack Hughes, who gets involved in the tackle. And what does Liam Watts do with the ball? You can see he just loses it. He's trying to break free of the man who's at the back of the play of the ball, at the back of the tackle in Mike Cooper. 
Is there a hand in? Is there a hand in? I would question how that ball comes out. And I think that's what the video referee is trying to see. I think you can see from that shot that he's lost the ball at the end there. So the no try will be confirmed. And that is the decision from Ben Thaler. Chris Kendall's uh, judgment confirmed. No glory for Liam Watts. Instead, Warrington will restart on the 20. Zero. Charnley. Go zero. Such an experienced player, Josh Charnley, but pretty much a peripheral figure tonight, very much on the fringes. The game played a lot of it right up the middles where people like Cooper are really making, putting their bodies on the line. Now they're going wide, and Sir Curry has to back the ball in field, but Shane couldn't gather it. You're right, Bill. It was good defence, it looked like they'd found the overlap at first, didn't it, Warrington? The minute they start to string a few passes together, Minikin it is who makes the tackle, and as he feels he's going out over that sideline, Ben Curry, he pushes it back in, and Paul McShane, he can't get to the ball cleanly enough. Right, it's nearly time to choose the man of the match, and you can have your say by using the R League app, a panel of rugby league legends will be drawing up a four-player shortlist. Voting will go live from the 70-minute mark. And if you want to be part of the process, go to the R League app. That's the way to do it, to choose tonight's man of the match here at the Hallowell Jones Stadium. Will he emerge in the uh, last 15 minutes of this game? Who will those rugby league legends pick out? Here is Chris Hill, trying to drive his side forward. He does drive them forward, but met by McShane and Jax O'Neill. Daryl Clark, Patton, Mamo, ball over the top, Lynham trying to use his strength, can't do so, flicks it back in field. He was, I think he went forward, says Chris Kendall. Bill, that, that is great defence. Casper Tigers, they've been challenged a few times, and they've not overcommitted. James Glurt. Just buying a bit of time before he makes and affects the tackle on Tom Lynham. When you feel like you're in trouble and you're not communicating, you're defending and you're on your try line, sometimes players will, will jump the gun, they'll get off the line, they'll try and solve the problem themselves. Once you do that, you create that space for the attacker. Long way to go yet before the Council of the Tigers can celebrate a, a victory for the first time in an away playoff match since September 1999, when they won 23-16 at Leeds, when Adrian Vowles, Dale Fritz and Michael Eager were the try scorers that night. There's a grimace on the face of Barry McDermott. <laughs> Don't remind me. That's a high tackle. That is, oh, that is a gift to the Casavid Tigers. It's a leg up. That's what it is. Well, the first contact was on the ball. The referee says it was a, it was a high shot. Well, Cass and Darrell Park, they won't be arguing with it. What's your true opinion here now? In this set, at the end of this set, would you be looking at a drop goal, or are you not fans of that? When, when, so in again. When you said it before, I thought, yeah. Well, a team that's not used to winning in the, in the league in the last eight games, set up, go for it. And I would agree, I think that Warrington Wolves are desperately trying to get into this game, but Cass Tigers through Liam Watts. I don't know who's voting for the man of the match, but Liam Watts must be right up there. Go for 22. So instead of getting one point and setting up for the one point, to, Phil, some strong runs sets them up for the two. And centre field, one hour with 30 metres out. And if you let me finish what I was saying, when Liam Watts carries the ball, he hopefully, for his team, he'll get a penalty, and then Daryl Powell will obviously offer the two. And you were actually going to say that. You didn't let me finish. 36 tackles Liam Watts has done. You remember, you cast your minds back, the opening, I think it was five minutes, they all had about 10 tackles. Well, now at this point in the match, they're all up 25 plus, and Liam Watts is the highest with 36, so they have done some work in that middle channel, Casford Tigers, but the important statistic and KPI is the scoreboard. So Peter Matout here, 
from 30-odd metres out. Just about straight onto the posts. Lost that one into the Kazavid Tigers supporters behind those posts on target. And are they heading for the next round of the Betfred Super League playoffs? You wouldn't think so from the stony-faced Kazavid Tigers coach. Well, good teams go harder here now when they're under pressure, which is where the Wolves are right now. How many of the players on the field are 13 out there? They've got a fighting spirit to go, even to, to make a stronger commitment than they have for the last hour and a bit. To see how much they want it, how hard they're willing to work. They've got to score Trevor. twice. Ratchford's gone for the short one, and the Casabit Tigers weren't prepared for that. And Warrington will get the ball back. Caught napping there. One, move, hit! Oh, that, that, was an penalty, that could have been a penalty from Matalti. Oh, well, that was more a penalty than Mike Cooper one was. And Ratchford stands up and looks at the referee in a bit of bewilderment there. Yeah, there was no player to react, is he, Stefan Ratchford? You can see the elbow on the back of his head well Warrington need to respond now coming up to 11 minutes of this game to go Jack Hughes Ben Murdoch Masilla McShane getting through a mountain of work with the tackle down low Daryl Clark's pass here is Philbin the battering ram Philbin runs into some solid defense that's the fifth tackle it was Watts who was underneath him, Clark's little kick, the ball is loose, it's dotted down a thing by Chris Hill, and it is a try, and Hill celebrates, and Warrington have hit right back, the devilish kick, Casava couldn't deal with it, and Chris Hill was the first to react, gets his fourth of the season, the captain leading from the front. Well, Paul McShane set one up in the first half. Darren Clark does it in the second half. And Stefan Ratchford going to knock these two points over, knowing that they're still going to be behind by two points. Want to finish the game strong and take the speed of the game up to the next level. And look at that clever kick. John Rankin couldn't deal with it. Jack O'Neill's hands on his head, knowing that they're in a battle all of a sudden because of this effort from Chris Hill. Well, let's just go back through the sequence of events. Cass get a penalty. They kick the two points. From the kickoff, there's a short kickoff. And then Warrington score a try off the back of that. Two-point ball game. And Warrington are sniffing out something special here. Just over 10 minutes to go. Can they go by? Here's the short kickoff. And it's the player who taps it back for me, Ben Curry. I'd be amazed if the legends don't pick him as one of the four potential man of the matches, man of the match contenders here, really. So, so much, hasn't he, for the Warrington side, who still are just two points behind. Oh, it's going to be a test of nerve and stamina. Oh, Mike Cooper hurtling back, runs into Holmes and Smith. Oh, he Big loves tackle. it. Oh, and there's a push as well. Straight into Ollie Holmes, and he's egging him on saying, well, come on then. Mike Cooper ran into a brick wall there. The referee says play on. Warrington may be looking for a penalty there. Well, you said before, he, he, some of his runs got some intent with him. Look at it. He doesn't change his line. Normally he's got good footwork in the line. Up to the halfway line. Four tackles gone. Warrington trying to build on that try. That's the fifth tackle. They're on the 40-meter line. Ratchford will launch this kick into the night sky. And James Clare is underneath it. He isn't convincing. The ball is claimed by Rankin and sighs of relief. Wait, wait. Calm yourselves down. Calm yourselves down. Well, penalty is upended Jordan Rankin. And when this ball goes high in the air, James Clerk was a nervous man. But they're relieved now from where they were a minute or so ago to get the penalty in this 30, 40 metres. What a great will certainly help them out. Great start to the playoffs here. We're in the last 10 here now, two point lead. And we need to. Uh, find a man of the match here tonight here are your contenders Liam Watts and Paul McShane of the Council of the Tigers Daryl Clark and Jake Mamo who only came on at half time they're the Warrington Wolves contenders the our league app is up and running vote now to find out who is going to be man of this 
intriguing match that is building towards a thrilling climax. The Casava Tigers leading by just a, a couple of points into the last 10 minutes. Clarkson burrowing his way forward. McShane with the run. Ratchford with the tackle. Here is Milner, try scorer for the Casava Tigers. That's the fourth tackle. Truman, little kick from Truman into the corner. It's a good one, but Lynham judged it perfectly. Well, seven tackles now, Warrington will have. And when you get the ball, maybe you go towards the sideline. I think that's what Adam Miller was trying to do. Go towards the sideline, Jake Truman to knock it over. And off the, the, the pitch, but they couldn't do that. Warrington gain another tackle here. Lining with the first run, then Charnley. The Warrington fans urging their side on, and Cooper responding up to the halfway line goes the front rower. He's and been, buys a few more meters and another big chance penalty. from Cooper. He's, He's got been. through contact consistently. The eight and the ten from the respective sides. Cooper and Liam Watts have had a real old tussle, haven't they? Really big, powerful carry in the ball. Nice and direct, like I said before, he's got, normally he's got a late shift at the line. He's not been using that late shift at this line, he's just been powering through the line. To the kick at goal, there's a big decision here now with a penalty on the halfway line. Time off, let's go Andrew on. Henderson coming on the field, Chris Hill saying yes, go for the posts. Well, and Ratchford will try it from just inside his own half. He's got the power, Stefan Ratchford. Now, could we, on the opening game of these playoffs, they're heading towards Golden Point. Is it too greedy to hope that we get to Golden Point? Jake Truman, look, he was looking for another set of six. I think the best option really was just make sure that the ball goes out of the field. Darrell Powell, Ryan Sheridan discussing, probably nervous as well now here. Chris Hill just asking questions of the referee. Chris Kendall. In actual fact, it is inside his own half. He did try and Chris Kendall has pointed out. He did try and sneak a couple of metres and put it in, in Casper's half, didn't he? Hasn't missed very much tonight, it's Chris Kendall. I'm backing him here, Stefan Ratchford. Well, there's no... I'm backing him. There's no wins. There's been some brilliant penalty goals from the centre spot. I think St. Helens to the Charles Cup final was it Len Killeen in the 60s. Fran Robotica kicked one at Anfield for Wigan in a World Club Challenge match. There's some pressure here. If this goes over, I think there's the time taken here now. A minute of the clock gone. Stefan Ratchford then. From just inside his own half. He's kicked 83 goals this season. This could be joyously received, but it hasn't got the distance, and Rankin is underneath it. And the Warrington crowd are quickly hushed. Oh, Matauti has gone down in agony. He's got up in agony. He's Minikin. Really unsung performer, Greg Minikin, in this Castle of a Tigers okay. side. He's missed only two games, though, this campaign. There he is, former York City Knights player, Greg Minikin. What a big game they've got at weekend, exactly. York City Knights against Featherstone. There you go, York against Featherstone in... Uh, the eliminators in the Betfred Championship and Toronto against Toulouse on Sunday at 6.30 on Arena. Here is Jake Mamo receiving that kick. Warrington still trailing. The tackle was high, claim the Warrington fans. Referee Kendall saw nothing wrong with that. Well, they're certainly trying to inspire the team now, aren't they? They know that the season's on the line. Just over four minutes to go, Jake Mamo, who gave him that lifeline with his first... Touch in the second half, they go wide here, under pressure. What a defensive effort this is from the Casavid Tigers. And Bryson Goodwin, we're into the last five minutes, the last four minutes now. Warrington looking for a way through this Tigers defence. Darrell Clark, Clark, looping pass. 
Jack Hughes, Hughes out the back to Jake Mamo. Chase Blair stands his ground, and it's Blair who picks it up. It's not, it's Truman who picks it up. No, it's not, it's King who picks it up. A real catalogue of errors there, nobody could get hold of it, and it is Toby King who picks it up. The referee will bring him back. To where, Stuart? Scott's called a knock on early on against uh, against Warrington. Yeah. The ball, is, the ball was not done, was it Jake Mamo yeah. who knocks the ball on? Possibly offside, I thought, I thought it hit a Warrington player at some point he goes forward. There's an argument for Chase Blair knocking that out of his hands, you know. Well, I think the last touch comes off Jake Mamo's. I think the decision's right. Well, Jake Mamo has the ball. I just think he's trying to wrap the tackle up. And then you it's see Jake that Toby, Toby King touch, King it goes that loses the ball forward. Well, I irrelevant to all that, it then comes off... Uh, Toby King knocks the ball forward. Oh, sorry, Toby King knocks the ball into Jake Mamo, which is accidentally offside, which is a scrum, which is what we've got. Perry. Three minutes to go. The Casper Tigers lead by 14 points to 12. These two have only met once previously in the playoffs. That was five years ago at the Jungle. Warrington won convincingly 30 points to 14. Here, just two points in it. Watts, referee Chris Kendall barking at the Warrington defenders to get back the 10. Well, you'd be keeping it in this channel on the right hand side and then you'd be kicking it off the field. You wouldn't be trying to get an extra set of six. Just keep it nice and tight here. You can see him not going to centre field, not looking to open the play up. Warrington desperate to get the ball back. Anxious Daryl Powell, Ryan Sheridan alongside him. McShane drills the kick in, and it's Warrington who come up with him. Guess who? It's Chris Hill everywhere. He's out on his feet, Chris Hill. Two points, two minutes to go. Can it get any better? Come on, the Wolves. What have you got in your tank? Here is Jack Hughes. Milner. Impressive since he was introduced into the action. Makes the tackle. Mike Cooper. Watts comes in, misses him. Cooper keeps on going. Holmes it is who brings him down eventually. 40 meter line in the Warrington half. Murdoch Masilla, Philbin. Philbin driving into the heart of the Casabit Tigers defense. Daryl Clark. Jack Hughes, oh, lovely one handed pass from Jack Hughes to Ben Murdoch Masilla. They're trying everything now. The ball floated to Warrington's left edge to Ratchford. Ratchford to Curry. Curry's pass and it's Price and Goodwin. Goodwin back on the inside. Mamo can't get the pass away, but it's Ratchford. Oh, Ratchford. And the referee says it's the turnover. The tackle was completed. Warrington thought they had the opportunity to keep it alive. Well, they really had Cass warded then, didn't they? I think Warrington, some of the Warrington fans thought that that was a penalty. Chris Clarkson may be pulling back Jay Mamo. Jordan, let's go! And Steve Price knows that Cass, in all honesty, had probably outplayed them. Last, on the scoreboard. Last minute of this game, last minute of somebody's season. Well, normally it's all about those quick play the balls, what you do. These will be the slowest play of the balls that Cass have come up with all year. And here is Jordan Rankin, who has been outstanding for them tonight. Try scorer. Wait. Go three. That no. ball, you can't do that. Is a penalty. a penalty. Phil been trying everything. Oh, Daryl Powell celebrates. celebrates. The Cows of the Tigers celebrate. They know that they're just about home and dry. For the Warrington Wolves, the thoughts of a double this season are disappearing. Well, it hasn't been a pretty game, but that man will not care as we see a yellow card. Warrington Wolves in the dying seconds. Bryson Goodwin, unfortunately. Bryson Goodwin said something. Giving great service to this club. And we'll go back to Australia with the well wishes of everybody here. But Castleford have turned up. They've ground out the win. They've toiled and done what's needed in this game. And they deserve it, winners. The Hooter sounds, Daryl Powell celebrates, the Casimir Tigers supporters celebrates away to our left. What a gutsy performance it has been. Steve Price disappointed in the way his side 
well played in the first half they responded in the second but they ran into some ferocious Tigers defense dejection on the face of these Warrington players who dreamt of a double this season their season is at an end but the Casava Tigers survive for another round at least of the playoffs they'll wait to see who comes out of the Wigan Salford game on the losing side for their next assignment and you can bet that those supporters will be there the side that it's never won on the road in the playoffs they've done it tonight and they have ended the hopes of the Warrington Wolves and it was built on a monumental defensive effort from this Casavid Tigers side hard to pick a man of the match in this contest there were four contenders Ben Westwood signing off with disappointment what a career Benny Westwood has had he played centre in Warrington's first ever game on this ground against his former club in 2015 and this was the 16th playoff